Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to give you guys an update on the Gravitator, Thomas Townsend Broad Gravitator experiment. So last time we spoke, I was trying to get this made out of aluminum or some sort of conductor. It's just such a big complex shape that I, I never figured out how to do it. So I went to the same shape, only smaller. And I was able to take that shape and get it printed out of aluminum. This is 3D printed aluminum. It's about a millimeter thick, so it's very strong, and it's obviously conductive, um, and it's the perfect geometry, so this is going to serve us really well for this experiment. Now, I also got my other two electrodes printed out of aluminum, so this is the middle electrode with some fine wire wrapped through it, and this is the centermost spherical electrode. Now, both of these are also three printed out of aluminum. Got a little nub here to attach a wire to it, these two are part of the same uh, terminal of the circuit, and then this is the opposite terminal of the circuit uh, in this three element uh, electrogravitic thrust producing apparatus. In order to keep these three elements away from each other, I have these plastic spacers that were 3D printed. These are hollow, and I'm going to be filling them with a solid dielectric. Uh, so this space in here, which fills that, that end right there, is going to be filled with paraffin, um, which has been doped with a high K dielectric material, which is similar to what Thomas Townsend Brown was using. Um, and so that that is basically the plan right now. I'm gonna fill that with paraffin, hook it up to an electronic circuit. But I wanted to talk about briefly about some of the difficulties with hooking something like this up to a circuit. Now, if you wanna transfer energy um, to a electrical capacitor, there, it's a, there's a limit to how fast an electrical capacitor will charge up. Like, let's say I have this uh, system complete and I hook it up to a high voltage battery. It will charge up, uh, it'll just charge up slowly at its own rate, a, a rate well defined by loss. And you can't get it to uh, charge up any faster than that. However, uh, that's under a DC charging condition. If you move to AC, uh, and you have resonant circuitry. So if I have an inductor paired with this capacitor, and let's say I have another capacitor on the other side of that inductor with the same value, then that's what's called CLC, resonant energy transfer. That is the quickest and most efficient way to transfer a lot of energy um, into a capacitor. Now we want a lot of energy in this capacitor, but the word energy, I have to be careful here because Thomas Townsend Brown's gravitators have often been associated with um, force produced by voltage, uh, but that's not actually a reality because voltage is a potential. There's no energy associated with it. In order to get the energy uh, in the system, we need to have a current flowing as well, and that voltage will be multiplied by that current. So if we have something like 100,000 volts, we don't need a very appreciable current to get significant amount of watts flowing through um, this capacitor. So that current flow, you might say like, oh, it's a capacitor, there's no current flow. It's called leakage current. There's always leakage current flow through a capacitor and um, it's typically thought of as an ins insignificant value. You know, it's usually very small and um, it represents very little power flow. But we wanna actually maximize the, uh, the leakage current because we want a significant amount of power in our capacitor at any given time. It's gonna, it's gonna, the amount of energy in voltage and current will directly be proportional to the force we produce. The current in something like this will be produced by, let's say this is our uh, hot electrode and this is grounded. Uh, as this reaches a very high electrical potential, it'll ionize the air around the wires. And that ionized air will seek to neutralize against the large opposite electrical potential surface, which is this um, capacitive surface. So you've got these ions being ripped off of here and flown into this, uh, this para parabolic dish at a really, really high speed. And every one of those ions that comes off of here and hits that plate, that's a small amount of current being flown through the system. Even though it's a capacitor and it doesn't have a steady flowing current, that ionic wind does represent a current flow. So we do want some ionic wind here, and that's why I haven't filled this entire thing with a, a doped dielectric. It should be, still be able to get force out of that by eliminating the ion wind completely, but I would need to make sure that my dielectric had a uh, semiconductor 
aspect to it, which allowed that leakage current to flow uh, economically. And this is what Thomas Townsend Brown was actually doing. He used lead oxide gel as his um, material that he doped his paraffin with. And uh, that lead oxide gel has semiconductive properties, which allowed a much larger leakage current to flow even in the absence of air. So that is um, an example why uh, these machines can work in vacuum or with completely solid dielectrics is because there is still that leakage current flowing and from that current we get the the energy of the voltage multiplied by the current and we also need that correct geometry which is why we have the, the strong asymmetry uh, in size between each uh, consecutive electrode. To, so we're trying to create this uh, electric field which is, is non-symmetrical basically uh, and this, this capacitor is the ideal way to do it. The double concave was the ultimate shape that Thomas Townsend Brown uh, ended up landing on. And when he was powering his uh, units, he often used um, DC, as we know, but if you look at his Banson lab videos, you will see that Tesla coils were also used, and that's what I'll be using. So that's why I haven't completed this experiment for you today is because I don't have my Tesla coil built yet. Uh, after I fill this with paraffin and uh, assess how much capacitance this, you know, these three electrodes in the proper configuration have, I'll need to connect a Tesla coil, um, which has been created and tuned to be resonant with this system, in order to supply the high voltage uh, energy at um, an economical rate, in order to charge it fast. Because DC will will have a very uh, low limit on how fast we can charge this, and we want to charge it fast. And the reason for that is because the energy, um, the, the the transfer of energy into thrust actually happens when this capacitor goes from zero volts or some low voltage value to a very high value. In our case, we might be shooting for a hundred thousand volts. So as this goes from zero volts to a hundred thousand volts, that charging time is actually when a force is experienced in an asymmetrical capacitor. And then what we want to do is actually discharge that energy in the shortest time possible in order to restart the charging cycle um, as soon as possible. The discharge of energy does not actually give us force production, according to Thomas Townsend Brown and some of the other research that has been done since his time. Um, so what we're trying to do is get these high voltage transients or these spikes where I'm charging, discharging, charging, discharging really fast. Uh, and a test coil would be ideal to supply that. But Tesla coils are not simple things to build. Uh, if you Google Tesla coil, you'll get hundreds of thousands of images which are not Tesla coils. <laughs> it might seem counterintuitive to you, but uh, often the Tesla coils that you see online have this really fine wire, <clears throat> excuse me, wrapped really tight. So you might have a thousand turns on the secondary and they're, they're all right next to each other. That's not a real Tesla coil. If you look at Nikola Tesla's coils, none of them looked like that. So if you want to see what, what goes into the design of a real Tesla coil, uh, you could check out Eric Dollar's Crystal Radio Initiative where uh, he kind of laid out the groundwork of how you might build an actual Tesla coil the way Tesla built them. And it is very much more difficult than um, the you know, thousand turn secondary that you can buy off of Alibaba, you know, whatever. So uh, I will be Taylor... Um, making a circuit to provide energy to this capacitor, and that'll take some time. So that's why I'm not uh, here giving an experimental demonstration today, but it's been a year since I had this big bad boy on my uh, channel, so I thought I'd give you guys an update, show you that I haven't completely given up on this project. Um, things are moving slowly, but I'll do what I can to, to finish up. I want to see the results of having a double concave um, three electrode system because of the way Thomas Townsend Brown describes this as such an ideal way of building a uh, capacitive thruster. The most ideal way. Um, so we'll see about that. <laughs> we'll see what, what the results of the experiment are. I appreciate you guys watching this video today. If you guys have any questions, leave, feel free to leave them down below. And I'll see you guys on the next one.